All the versions of uh, Caddy 19 and the later ones of 18 have got the annotative functionality. So uh, if you haven't already got it, um, certainly make sure you download the latest version. At the end of the tutorial, we'll, uh, we'll send you an email telling you how you can have a look at uh, the video again online once uh, we've posted it on YouTube, plus also the other ones that you may have missed because this is the, uh, the third of a series that we're doing and uh, the other ones that you missed have certainly proved extremely popular. So I'm going to hand over straight away to Andrew who will start the presentation. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks Derek and good morning. Uh, today we're going to have a look at annotative text. Certainly having taken support calls from people in the past, uh, the issue of trying to maintain a constant, uh, in this instance, text size uh, over various scales of viewports has been quite key for people. So in order to maintain presentation, uh, rather than having text which will shrink with viewports, having something which stays the same size. So giving us something where we can maintain that size, irrespective of the, of the scale of the viewport, here we see we've got uh, different scales uh, of viewport there, and even different locations for the text. So we'll see that as the scale of the viewport changes, we may have to just rearrange the text on our screen just to make sure that uh, the text doesn't overlap, to make sure that all the, uh, the arrows lead us uh, our finishes, which uh, are subject to annotative scaling as well. So we're going to take a look at, uh, at that side of things. We can also look at how we can uh, create cells where you can maintain the, the same scaling for your hacking. Now, in this particular instance, it's a, a mechanical detail, but it could equally be a site plan, for instance, something where you don't need uh, say the 75 millimeter coursing and so on. So uh, we're going to take a look at all of those things, but uh, in the first instance, we'll keep it nice and simple by just going to some, something that a lot of people will, will be familiar with, the idea of maintaining text size within viewports. So here we've got a couple of different sorts of text. So here on the right hand side of uh, where I'm just uh, indicating with the cursor, hopefully you can see that. Uh, we'll see the standard text uh, and the usual problem where it just gets smaller uh, being scaled along with the viewport. Whereas on the, the left hand side we have text which actually maintains its size and it just allows us to keep that uniformity. So going back to the, uh, the core of the, uh, the drawing here. So if If we go to text set, we should all be familiar with the idea of putting in a height and then there's a, the scale factor there. So if we were presenting our viewport at 150 and we just say OK to that, we can enter our text and we'll just place it uh, down here on the right. Create a, a viewport of that. So this is the, the standard text. So just to make sure everybody's absolutely up to speed with what's going on, we create our viewport at 150. Let's just uh, take the tick out of there for a moment. We'll come back to that one. So there's our, there's our text. We press the space bar and go for 1 to 100. And we see that the text gets correspondingly smaller. So that's not where we want to be. I'll just delete those now. So if we go back to our text, and we notice here we have a little radio button proclaimed annotative. And what we'll notice is that when we tick the annotative box, the scale factor disappears, and we're just left with a plotted height. So this is the scale that we want to, to plot our text at. Now, just before we uh, get it into there, if we look at our object properties, we'll see that there is an annotation scale here of 1 to 50. So we're starting with the premise that we're going to be working at 1 to 50 here. So setting it up, we'll tick that box. So we go to a 10 mil plotted height, and we'll enter our text. So I just drop the text over here. Uh, 
to say elevation annotative. Okay, so that's and there is our. So now when we go to our port, can now put that down at one two fifty. So there, that's fine. If we were to leave that box unticked for adding the annotative scales, and we just choose one to one hundred. Uh, our viewport there, we see that it doesn't appear. In fact, there's uh, a box over here on our object properties for the sheet. Uh, if we do a regen here, you'll see that uh, appears. But if we change that to no, then that will disappear. The reason is, and uh, we'll show this just by going back to our model space here and looking at the, the text itself. Text. So here's our end text. We'll come down to the, the current scale, and it has just one that it will appear at at the moment. <clears throat> now we could add in another scale here, so we could just add that to the list and update that. So when we go back to our sheet, just do a regen, and sure enough, the text appears in the viewport. So we've got the same scale text here. Going back to the model, if we wanted to, for instance, have a viewport at, say, 1 to 20, so we'll just take a much smaller area of our drawing here, we'll tick that box, but we'll go for 1 to 20, tick the box, so we're adding that annotation scale in, in which we can use the don't show again, so we can see that. And this gives you uh, a little bit of background on the way uh, annotative scales and uh, uh, memory work. We will drop that down there and just do a regen, and we'll see that we get the same as entries. Now, coming back to our model space, it might be the case that we would like to, to just move that text around. Well, if we choose, if we go for, say, 1 to 20, so that's where our text would be. We can just pick up the text and move it, say, to there. Go back to our sheet, and we'll notice that the representations for the 1 to 50, the 1 to 100, it stay exactly where it was. The elevation annotative has moved, though, with the 1 to 20. You'll read in the help file, if you go to the annotative text section there, is the way in which we're able to, to move text around. If we pick with our annotation scale set there, we're actually just picking uh, and moving the one representation of the text. If we want to move all three, then we can either use the text move, so going to the text commands, or we can use the move command from the right-click context sensitive menu. As I say, that's all very well documented in the, uh, the help file there. So if you need to know more on that, just go to help and uh, type in uh, annotated text, and uh, that will take you to it. Taking other things that we might want to do with uh, our text, uh, we might want just to add uh, text in at certain, certain scales. So at 1 to 20 or 1 to 50, we may want to introduce some text here for, for notes. So we could come to our text, our text editor, and we'll just place our text into here, and we could roof tiles, for instance. Make that something smaller. Our text, and we could add a leader in here as well. Okay, so we've got our, our text, and because our text just at 1 to 50, when we go to our, our viewports, if we move our view, you can see, get out there, we should see that it appears just on the, the 150, but not on the 1 to 100. And uh, 
if I moved it out on my 1 to 20, we'd see that as well. A little thing that we can do with the text, and here I'm just going to take something very uh, generic. So I'll just copy that to the clipboard. So it's just a piece of text. We'll go to our, our text. So bearing in mind we're still at that 1 to 50. Enter our, our text. So we'd enter it here. Paste that in. The text. Now it could be that I need to bring that in inside of this rectangle there. So if I select the text, we'll also notice that along with the plotted height, we have a maximum width. So if I type in on there, we'll see we can automatically word wrap the text. And you can have different word wrapping for the individual text too. You, uh, if you have different scales for the text and you want them differently word wrapped, then divide that figure by the, uh, the scale that uh, you're um, uh, switching to. But what we'll see is that on our sheet here, we're getting the text which uh, is both pe peculiar to the scale, the scale of the viewport, and sized accordingly. So I'm just going to, uh, to move on now. So say you have a, a drawing such as uh, this tank detail. So we, uh, we have our, uh, our drawing already created. And if we, we just select, in this particular instance, the, the hatch, we'll notice that this isn't annotative hatch. So if we created our, uh, our viewport of that, then it would just represent as normal hatching. What we can do is we can add that and we can make it uh, annotative. Now, at the moment, that's one-to-one. -one. So if we create a, a viewport now, for one-to-one, -one. that's rather large for here. OK, so we'll see all the hatching. If we create, create our viewport one to, one to two, and we're adding that in, then again, we'll get the hatching. If we created our, our viewport, but removed that box, and we went to say one to five, region, we notice that the hatch doesn't appear now. So it's a, a very quick way of changing whether your hatching uh, appears, uh, say, on different scale representations. So in this case, it's uh, a detail, as I say, but it could equally well be a, uh, a site plan where you want information, maybe less of it in terms of the hatching, uh, maybe the text for your, your smaller scale location times and so on. Um, yeah, I Well, uh, in that particular case, um, it's got a bit of an echo on the line here. We'll try to, uh, to remove that. So uh, in that particular case, uh, if you have text, so if we come back to uh, our drawing here, we have the piece of text which wasn't uh, annotative. Uh, as I say, it is just uh, a setting, uh, setting there. So we can turn the annotative on, and then we can decide which scales we want it to appear at or not. So we can literally add those scales in or remove them at will. We hope that will <coughs> excuse me, update the, the viewport. And the other question was quite nicely worded. She says, wow, can I do the same with dimensions? Uh, absolutely. Uh, it applies to finishes. So text leaders dimensions. So the classic case of needing to, uh, or previously, should I say, needing to create lots of different layers 
and then switching them on it on and off in viewports no need to do that now and of course you can keep them exactly the same size so that uh, it, it just makes it uh, one dimension to alter should anything change so you don't uh, well just thinking logically about it if you've got one piece of information to, to edit uh, much less risk of getting anything wrong than with multiple versions of the same thing See at the moment is and what happens if I give this drawing to somebody else well if their uh, system supports annotated text then they will get exactly what you have obviously if uh, their system doesn't support uh, annotative text it's maybe time to talk to them about caddy DWG based systems do support it so uh, you're quite safe to use it I think it's fair to say on your drawings and you should be using it if you've got a use for it well it's a very very useful way of cutting down on the work that you uh, you need to do uh, I would say don't use it uh, indiscriminately because uh, the, the annotative text is, or annotative finishes are slightly more memory hungry than the, the non-annotative versions but if you compare that to putting multiple instances of the same piece of text uh, just at different sizes then you will actually save so just be aware when you're using it